CataractCoach.com. Fuchs dystrophy with an extended depth of focus IOL. So can you implant an EDOF IOL in this eye with Fuchs dystrophy? Let's look carefully here. Let's zoom in here on that corneal endothelium, and you can see with this bright red reflex, you really can see that there are a lot of gutte there, some drop out of endothelial cells centrally, and it may actually look a little worse than it is. Important to keep in mind two measurements that we did in the pre-op period. Number one, corneal pachymetry, and number two, the endothelial cell count. So counting the endothelial cells there in the actual center of the cornea, it was about 1,200 cells per square millimeter, and the pachymetry was 570 microns. Now, why is that important? A lot of studies have shown that if the central pachymetry is less than 600 microns, the patients tend to do well with just cataract surgery alone, and you probably don't have to do a concomitant endothelial transplantation for the cornea. If the pachymetry is 640 or more, the guidelines say, yeah, you may be better off doing them both together, the cataract plus the cornea. And 600 to 640 is kind of the gray zone in the middle. So this patient is squarely on the right side of the equation with an endothelial cell count that's pretty reasonable, and the patient has a pachymetry 570 microns. So 570 is pretty good. Now what's nice is too, we have historical data for this patient. This patient was seen in our clinic about five years ago where the endothelial cell count was 1,250 cells per square millimeter. It's only a drop of 50 cells uh, per square millimeter in the center there over five years. And the pachymetry only increased from about 560 microns to 570 over five years. So really not bad at all. We take into account also the patient's age and we can say, you know what, safely in this patient's lifetime, the odds are likely that the patient will not end up needing an endothelial transplant. Now, we've got to be very careful here in the surgery, in the cataract surgery. We don't want to take out any more endothelial cells than we, than we have. We want to be as gentle as possible. So there's a recoat of endothelium with the dispersive viscoelastic, and we're going to chop this lens in the bag. Leave it in the bag. Stay away from the corneal endothelium. So phaco probe going in. Here's the chopper. You're going to clean up a little of the anterior lens material, Buzz into the probe, chopper goes in, there's a vertical or combo chop. We've got two nice halves that are created. And now we can continue to chop and bring these pieces out of the capsule bag. Just staying deep though, we want to be at the iris plane at the, at the most, or maybe operate even more within the capsule bag. We're also using FACO power modulation to really minimize the amount of energy that we put inside the eye here. And so because of that, we were able to put a bare minimum amount of ultrasonic energy in this eye. So let's get those pieces separated and emulsify them. Luckily, it's not too dense of a cataract. So again, the two factors I want to control here are number one, how much ultrasonic energy is put in the eye. I want to minimize that. I also want to minimize the total amount of fluid that I run through the eye. And so we have a good coating of endothelial protection with that dispersive viscoelastic, and that's going to stay in position. And now we'll take the cataract out. And at the end of the case, we really have run a bare minimum amount of fluid through the eye. And so this is a key to being efficient in these cases is to not be running a whole bag or you don't want to put 500 cc's of fluid through this eye. That'll, that may do more damage than any kind of ultrasonic energy. So we're pretty good here. Nicely cleaned up. Here comes the IA probe. We'll take away the last little bits here and clean this up nicely. Now, in the past, I was a lot more conservative. I would say, no, only put in a monofocal lens here because, but you know what? I've learned from my colleagues and I've learned from you, my viewers and my fans, that you can actually dial in something for a patient that maybe is like an extended up the focus lens. And this patient had a fantastic outcome. So this patient actually achieved a really nice outcome. We ended up with 2025 uncorrected distance vision and the patient ended up just a little bit on the myopic side. So a, a spherical equivalent of minus 0 0.375. So between a quarter and a half diopter, which is great, because remember, if this patient does need an endothelial transplant later down the road, that being currently on the myopic side is very helpful because, as you know, you'll get a slight maybe half diopter shift towards hyperopia with that endothelial transplant that, that may happen later. But in all likelihood, given this patient's prior history and how gentle we are in this case, I highly doubt this patient 
um, in the in the rest of his or her lifetime is going to actually need to have that endothelial transplantation. So going in here, remove the viscoelastic, we'll clean this up, polish up the anterior capsule rim. But I think, yes, we can offer an EDOF IOL for a patient like this and have a really nice outcome. And again, at the end here, we're really going to clean up that anterior capsule rim, get all that lens of a thelal cell out of the way, minimize post-op inflammation, and this patient will have a beautiful outcome. Thanks for watching.